Barbara Steele would appear in two horror films in 1966. Like She Beast, the other film would be a gothic Italian melodrama as well. But unlike She Beast, An Angel for Satan would be one of her crowning achievements in the genre. That's not to say the film is terribly original. There's a lot to be said for the fact that it seems to recycle tropes that we've seen throughout the decade with Barbara Steele films. And honestly, beyond that, it's not as if Barbara Steele was the only one making these types of movies, but she did become synonymous with them. So it must have seemed like a big surprise to fans of the time when this film, although seeming very familiar to them, was a glowing, crowning achievement. It's rare to find people make the argument that this film is superior to her work with Mario Bava that actually started the trend in 1960. But to my eyes, this holds up against anything in the subgenre. An Angel for Satan tells the story of a young woman who returns to her family's ancestral home, a small seaside village. At the same time, an artist has arrived to restore a cursed statue. The reasons why the statue would be restored in the first place, knowing that it'll only bring misery, is a little bit complex and not completely convincing, but the entire film seems to ooze Edgar Allan Poe, so we're going to just ignore the fact that all this could have been avoided very easily. Barbara Steele is, as usual, the standout here as she runs this movie. In addition, we have the extreme benefit of seeing her in two roles, although in one body. She plays the innocent Harriet and the diabolical Belinda, each with her typical flair. And while it's tempting to say that she might be leaning on both her good girl and bad girl tropes, it's amazing what happens when the dialogue is up to her talent. And here it is. This is a well-written film, and it is a well-staged film, and it is an exceptionally well-directed film. It looks beautiful, as does she. But what's really amazing is she's asked to stretch and portray these two roles, and at the same time, in both characters, leave you wondering about her motivations. It's a tough role. It's one for a seasoned actress. And here she just pulls it off with diabolical effectiveness. You can see that by this point, there had been a change in the Italian film industry. Perhaps it was Fellini's influence or Bava's influence, but kind of the strapped down motionless camera technique that you can see at the early part of the decade was receding like a tide. What we got instead was a much more polished film, one you can watch alongside any American film of the period, and it never loses a step. The film does have some last act twists and turns that separate it from its brethren, and some will naturally decry it as not being a pure gothic Italian melodrama for that reasons, but that's unfair. At this point, we needed something different and we got it. But it wasn't just the photography that had matured. There are darker themes in this film that are definitely intended for adults. Although children probably would get the gist of it, it's hard to imagine them really embracing a film, or their parents wanting them to embrace a film, in which control and rape are central themes. In fact, the centerpiece of this film, literally in the center of this film, is a blatant S&M fantasy. It's a raw film, despite all of its polish, and it's going places that you would simply not expect in a film made in 1966 to go. Sure, other films of the period dealt with necrophilia and incest and other adult themes, but here what we have is a blatant adult fantasy. The film seems at many points like a, an extremely fractured, extremely adult fairy tale. A haunted fairy tale, where the grim is still in the grim fairy tale. And Barbara Steele is the perfect lead for this type of film. She always has been. But what makes this film very special is that it is a moment in time. It feels like that moment, and yet it has not aged poorly. Now for the bad news. Getting a hold of a good copy of this film has traditionally been very tough. 
it's simply not a film that got picked up by AIP or another distributor and put in theaters across the country and then licensed to television stations, thrown on the VHS. None of that happened for An Angel for Satan. And that's a shame. Currently, you can find the film on YouTube in its original Italian with English subtitles. And the subtitles are decent. Hopefully, we'll see a real release for this film in the near future so that most can see what is really a landmark in Barbara Steele's catalog.